Let us now see some interesting properties of binomial theorem. Let me again recall what the binomial theorem states. x plus y whole power n is summation k from 0 to n, n choose k into x power n minus k y to the k. Now, what if I replace x by 1 and y by x? So, I'll basically I want the expansion of 1 plus x whole power n. So, this is a particular case what we are going to see. So, what will the expansion of 1 plus x hold to the n be? Summation k from 0 to n, n choose k, 1 to the n minus k into x to the k. So, this happens to be summation k from 0 to n, n choose k into x to the k. Because the rest of the terms here is 1 and hence we have n choose k into x to the k. So whenever we have something like 1 plus x whole square or 1 plus x whole cube or any n for that matter, you need not basically expand everything. You can directly write it as n choose k into x to the k. The terms will be these. The next property. When I expand x plus y whole power n, I have these terms n choose 0 x power n y to the 0 plus n choose 1 x to the n minus 1 into y plus n choose 2 x to the n minus 2 into y square and so on and the last term would be n choose n x to the 0 into y to the n. Now what is the first term? It is n choose 0 into x to the n. y to the 0 is 1 and n choose 0 is again 1 and therefore I have only x to the n as the first term. The second term is n choose 1 into x to the n minus 1 into y. The third term is n choose 2 into x to the n minus 2 into y square and so on. Now, where are we getting to? Let me generalize. The rth term will be, any general r term will be what? n choose r minus 1 into x power n minus r plus 1 into y to the r minus 1. This might seem to be complicated but let me just tell you observe the patterns in the terms here. Consider the third term we had n choose 2. The third term has n choose 2 x to the n minus 2. So if I consider r to be 3 n minus 3 plus 1, minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2 and hence n minus 2 we have and y square, your r was 3 so you have a 2 here. So this is very helpful in solving problems. So the rth term is given to be n choose r minus 1 into x power n minus r plus 1 into y to the r minus 1. So you can have this formula and use it to find any term in the expansion. The next property. In your expansion you might have several terms but how do we find the middle term? Supposing say n is very large like 15 or 20 you really cannot keep counting the terms one by one to find out the middle term. So let us use a nice formula here. Say n is even then what? Then there is only one middle term which is the n plus 2 by 2 the term. So the n plus 2 by 2, this term will be your middle term in the entire expression. What if n is odd? Then you will have two middle terms. You can consider the example of x plus y the whole cube. This is x cube plus y cube plus 3x square y plus 3y square x. You can rearrange this and get it as x plus 3x square y plus 3y square x plus y cube. You have two middle terms. You cannot decide this as a middle term or this as a middle term. So you consider both of them and therefore if n is odd we have n plus 1 by 2 the term and n plus 1 by 2 plus 1 this term is also the middle term and hence we have two middle terms if n is odd. I hope I am clear till now.
the largest coefficient in the expansion of x plus y whole power n will be the coefficient of the middle term this must be quite intuitive because you see in the expansion n choose 0 and n choose n both turn out to be 1 you see the coefficients keep increasing till a point and then go on decreasing so the point where it is highest is the coefficient of the middle term so these were some of the nice properties now let us solve some examples